Today we get to learn about deep copy and shallow copy. Oh, oh, why are you changing? Why, 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 why? Hey, Ryan Monster, what's wrong? Oh, I need a copy of this object as a backup, but now when I change the string in the first object, it changes the string in the second object as well. I'm going to get picked and then I'm going to get fired. Ah! No, Ryan Monster. Why? It's okay. Look, have you thought about making a deep copy? What's that? Well, lucky for you, I've got a song about it. Anders Heilsberg, where are you at? Where are you at? Let's pull it down. Pull it down from Git. Woo! Shallow copy and assignment ain't worth the hype. Unless you want to copy a value type. Deep copy for reference now, that's where it's at. But you better be careful or your memory get fat. McB gonna tell you so you thank him a minute. Or you'll get some weird bugs and miss the sprint. Shall I copy your assignment ain't worth the hype. Unless you want to copy a value type. Deep copy for reference now, that's where you're at. Or you better get careful or your memory get fat. McB gonna tell me so I'll thank him a minute. Or you'll get some weird bugs and miss the sprint. I gotta thank Dio the Villain for making all these amazing beats. DMX, rest in peace, baby. The whole world misses you. You're gone far too soon. I gotta thank Mrs. McCormick for opening up the computer science lab back when I was in middle school. Let me program in basic back when I was a kid. I gotta thank my dad for bringing home my TRS-80. And I learned how to program in logo and basic on that thing. Thank to all of my YouTube fans. We out. Peace. So what's the difference between an assignment, a shallow copy, and a deep copy in C Sharp, and why is it important to know this for an interview? Well, this is one of those questions that the interviewer might ask when they want to know how well you know the underlying structure of C Sharp and .NET. Now, before we get started, please like and subscribe. Feel free to connect with me on Twitter or on LinkedIn. And as always, uh, the code for this is available on my GitHub or my website. Now, .NET stores information in two ways, value types, and reference types. Now, if you don't know the difference between value types and reference types, I have a video on value types and reference types. You can watch that up here. Go watch that video, then come back here. It'll also be available at the end of this video. Now, just to recap, value types are things like integers, floats, boolean. Reference types are things like strings and objects. So let's say we're writing a program and we want to make a copy of an object. Okay, so I have this public class monster, and it has a string for the monster's name, it has an int for the monster's age, and it has an object here called fur, and fur is a class down here that holds fur color, like blue, green, red, whatever. Okay, so let's say I wanna try to uh, make a copy of object monster by just using an assignment operator. So I'm gonna create my monster here. I'm gonna create Ryan monster, his age is 25, uh, I'm going to give the monster a uh, blue color fur, and uh, then I'm going to create an instance of the monster. So as you can see here, monster one, age 25, monster fur color is blue. Now I'm going to use the assignment operator to create monster two, and that should make a copy, right? Well, let's take a look. Sure looks like a copy, 25, Ryan monster, fur color is blue. Now, since I made a copy, I should be able to change the name and the age, and it shouldn't affect the second object. Well, let's try that. So I'm going to change Monster 1's name to Generic, and look what happens. Generic is changed on Monster 1 and on Monster 2. Same thing with the age. What happened? Well, doing this and setting an assignment operator doesn't actually create a copy. All it does is create a new variable and make a reference to the original variable's memory location. So if you've ever used an assignment operator to make a copy, you weren't actually making a copy. And that's probably why you were pulling your hair out. Or your fur! Yes, Ryan Monster, your fur too. But I'm gonna show you how you can make an actual copy. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to be explicit with .NET and tell it exactly what you want to copy. And you can use something called memberwise clone to do that. Let me show you how. So I'm going to go back to my class monster, which is the class that I want to clone. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to create a, a new method called shallow copy. 
Now, .NET has this handy method called memberwise clone, and that's going to give you a shallow copy of all of your value types, and it'll also give you some strings, too, and I'll show you why that happens. So just do a memberwise clone off of this. You have to cast it to the type that you want to return, which in this case is monster. In this case, I'm going to assign it to a temp, and I'm going to return that temp value. Now let's throw it into a unit test and see what happens. Okay, let's step through this and test this out. Uh, I'm going to create Ryan Monster, age 25. I'm going to assign the name age and Monster Fur to Monster 1. And then I'm going to do a shallow copy of Monster 1 and put that into Monster 2. Now, I want to show you what happens when this happens. So I'm going to open up both of these. I'm going to do my copy. Now, here's Monster 2. Now I'm going to change the first monster, Monster 1's name, to the name Generic, and you won't see Monster 2 change. And it doesn't. Same thing with the age, 50. I'm going to change 50 uh, for Monster 1, and you won't see Monster 2 change. And it doesn't. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the fur color. I'm going to make the fur color green. And in order to do that, I'm going to open everything up here. As you can see, the fur color here is blue. So when I change the fur color to green, only monster one should be green, right? But both change. Why is that? Well, memberwise clone only copies value types like integers, floats, bool. But you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, Ryan. There was a string in monster. It was the name. Why did the name get copied if memberwise clone only copies value types and string is a reference type? Well, there's a very simple reason why. Remember, strings are immutable. So for Monster 1, when you change the name, you didn't change the memory location where that original name was. You went and created a new memory location, put the name in there, and told the string, go point at that. But Monster 2 was still pointing at that old memory location, so it looks like it was copied. Now, the fur class is a reference type as well. It's an object, but... Memorwise clone doesn't really know what to do with that, nor does it know how far down it should go. And that's when you need to do your own deep copy. Now, there's a number of ways you can do this. I personally prefer to use a constructor and then build all the objects individually. It's a little tedious to do this on the front end, but it works really well, and it gives you very fine control over what you do or do not want in your new clone. Okay, now here's how we're going to do this. We're going to create a method called deep copy, and deep copy is going to return a monster. Now, our basic idea here is we're going to use constructors to use the current or this values of our current monster to create new objects and then pass that object back. So in this case, we're going to use this monster's fur type to create a new instance of the fur class. And then we're going to take this monster's name and this monster's age and the fur class we just created, the fur object we just created, and we're going to create a new monster called cloned monster, and then we're going to pass that cloned monster back. Now, let's see how this works in a unit test. Okay, let's test this out. So I'm going to create monster one, and then I'm going to do a deep copy of monster one, and I'm going to send that to monster two. Now, let's take a look at these monsters. I'm also going to open up the monster fur type, you can see the first one is blue and the second one is blue. We clone this monster. Now, let's change Monster 1's name to generic. Monster 2 should not change, and it doesn't. Now, let's change Monster's age to 50. Monster 2 should not change, and it doesn't. Now, let's change Monster's color to uh, green, and Monster 2 should not change, and it doesn't. The deep copy was successful. So why doesn't .NET have a native way of doing a deep copy? Well, it kind of does, and you've probably used it all the time. It's called serialization. You know when you put something out over the wire for Web API, you serialize it into JSON, and then you send it out over the wire, and your endpoint picks up that JSON and deserializes it back into an object? You're doing a deep copy. But before you start doing serialization, one word of warning, you're going to be subject to all the performance penalties that you get with serialization. And do you really need everything in that object? So think about it before you go down the serialization path. One more thing. If you've been around .NET a while, you've probably seen this thing, iClonable. Now, iClonable is kind of like that crazy uncle that we have who was never the same after he mentioned he was kidnapped by aliens. We don't really talk about Uncle iClonable. 
Now, the problem with iClonable is that it really doesn't let you know whether you're doing a deep copy or a shallow copy. And even Microsoft is a little embarrassed about that. So you can invite iClonable to Thanksgiving dinner for backwards compatibility, but please don't invite iClonable to production. So to recap, if you're using an assignment operator, you're not actually making a copy. You're just making a reference to the original object. If you change stuff in the original object, it's going to be reflected in what you think is the copy. If you really want to make a copy, create your own method and use member-wise clone. That'll give you all of the value types and it'll give you any strings that you have, which will behave like a value type in just this case but you're not gonna get objects. If you need to get objects in the thing that you want to copy, you need to do a deep copy. I like to do it by using a constructor and then creating all sorts of new objects and passing that back. You could also do it using serialization, serialize out and deserialize back from JSON, but you're gonna be subject to any of the penalties that happen when you serialize or deserialize and your object memory is going to be doubled. Good luck on your next interview. You see, little nerd, when you perform the duties of the project manager, you must always follow the principle of the circle. It's the most important part of project management for a project manager to extrude when dealing with nerds. The nerd is up here, and then every two hours, the project manager circles back to the nerd to see if they're done. That's the most important principle of good project management. It's a